Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Well, guys, I. Did you hear it last night when I said that Archangel Michael was going to cut the spirit attachment from my phone? Did you guys hear a sword being wielded? As he cut it away from my phone, like instantly, I did not hear it when it happened. When I went to put the music back into the introduction yesterday, it was there. Kind of freaked me out, to be honest. But how cool is that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yesterday, I I was. Recording the show, and as I was recording the show, there was so much activity in my room. Fairy folk. I think I have my dragons are with me. I think I saw a couple angels. When I went into the living room last night, I saw the wing of an angel just for like a faint second, and then it was gone. And then my, um, a son had come in, talked to me, left my door open, and in the hallway I saw something walk by. <laughs> I think it was a dragon. It was like this huge, huge energy. But it wasn't a bad energy. It was a good energy. <laughs> I'm finally starting to see the stuff a little tiny bit more. I mean, I've done so many... Um, third eye exercises to see stuff more clear. If I close my eyes, I can, but if my eyes are open, I don't see anything. So I keep hoping. <laughs> I keep hoping. But I picked up several new listeners today. I'm so happy to have you guys on board. My friend, my dear, dear friend, Peter Luigi, he finally started listening a couple hours ago and he said you're so relaxing I love your voice I want to listen every night as I'm laying in bed I don't have to keep my eyes open and I can just fall asleep listening to your show and I'm sure your information will still go into my subconscious mind and help me and I thought that was sweet I I'm like yay that's one of the things I was kind of hoping that people would do I mean, not fall asleep to my show, (laughs) but that it would be relaxing and something that helps people feel really positive as they sleep. So, oh my God, that Archangel Michael sword sound just, that was weird, really weird. I loved it though. So the uh, Schumann resonance is extremely high today. I felt it. Ascension symptom scale today is 99. So I had to go do some stuff downtown related to getting my visa here. And I got my, my translator. He is so amazing. And he charged me half of what all the other local people would do. Some lady said suddenly out of nowhere she's super busy because I didn't use her services right away, you know, and then all of a sudden she's like, well, now I'm really busy. And I think her excuse was the Venezuelans. And then it dawned on me later, why would Spanish speaking people need you to translate stuff into Spanish? Like it makes no friggin' sense. And it was just one of those things. Oh, well now there's so many people. I'm like, okay. And you know, weird. So maybe she just meant Americans and said Venezuelans. Cause it was on her mind. I don't know. It was just so strange, but, um, you know, I just had such a hard time. I mean, like three or four people had like put me off and this guy I met at the last minute. He is a Venezuelan national but he's been here for years already and he spent years in the United States and his English is perfect. And I was so happy to meet him. I was like, Oh yeah, that's so good. Cause I have a lot of stuff to be translated. Eventually when I get my books, I'm going to have them translated too. And he might find that enjoyable. 
you know, work as opposed to <laughs> name, date of birth, you know, you know, marital status, you know, trans, you know, it's like he's, he already had the forms on his computer to translate because he's been doing this for so long. He created the forms on his computer. He said, Oh, it's like so easy for me. I'm like, Oh my God. Not easy for me. I do speak Spanish, but not that good. And, and government forms are just such a bear. But I went down there and, I mean, I expected I was going to have to pay tons of money. And it was a lot less money than, you know, I saved $40 from what I thought I was going to have to pay for the notary public and... You know, I saved, I literally paid him half of what I thought I was going to have to pay. And I'm so grateful. Seriously, hashtag grateful (laughs) right now. But, um, but all that, I was just exhausted all day long, even with that. And it went pretty smoothly actually, but all day long, so tired. So I came home. And I told my son, you know what? We watched, started to watch Ghostbusters, the new one together on Netflix. And I was like, so looking forward to it. And I just, after like 40 minutes, he's like, he woke me up. He's like, mom, you're sleeping. (laughs) I'm all, oh my God, I am. I fell asleep. It was so relaxing and so comfortable to hang out with my son and just have, have the day done. You know what I mean? And I ended up so um, tired, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go lay down. I, I don't know. I'm going to set my alarm, you know, for 90 minutes from now, so I'd have a good good long nap before I, I recorded for you guys. So I lay down, and this uh, I have my lights off, except for my Christmas lights I keep in my room. They're blue, and this... <laughs> This being of light, or being, not of light, but like just a being, an E.T., um, all of a sudden appeared with his face right directly in front of my face. And his head was practically touching my head, and I could see his eyes. My, my, My eyes were closed, so of course this is third eye stuff. I could see his eyes practically touching my eyes. He was so close to me. And I felt so much love from him. And I could tell that he had wrinkles. He was an older person. And he had his, his eyes were big and black. And I could see little tiny black eyelashes. Very little sparse eyelashes. But they were black. And he was smiling at me. And I said, I said, hello. And he said, hello, may we communicate with you? And I said, yes, of course you may communicate with me. What's your name? And he said, my name is Pata. And when he said it, I saw how to spell it. P-apostrophe-T-A-A-H. And I'm like, it's nice to meet you, Pata. And he said, it's nice to meet you too. And we just kind of communed energetically. And I don't know if he gave me downloads. (laughs) I don't really understand what happened because he said, can we communicate with you? But there wasn't a whole lot after that (laughs) as far as communication. So I'm still trying to unravel what the heck just happened. This was like maybe two hours ago now. (laughs) <laughs> about like 10 minutes to 10 and I'm like what 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 just happened there I like he didn't touch me and he didn't abduct me he wasn't the beings that have abducted me in the past he was a different ET race and I said welcome space brother you know you are my space brother and he said yes we are brothers or he said, we are space brothers. But then he kind of smiled at that. And I said, you could come and talk to me anytime. And he said, okay, thank you. But then he just left. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm like, why would you make that effort not to actually continue the conversation? But there was like this long pregnant pause, like a little bit of a gap in between those words. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking, he sent me something. I don't know what. <laughs> He sent me packets of information. I have to, I guess, unravel somehow. Very interesting, though. And so, of course, you know, I get online and I start looking up the name Pata, and it turns out that was the name of an ancient god or ET in Egypt. And then there's a lady in Australia that channels an energy called Pata, but the way she describes that doesn't sound at all like the guy I just met. And then there's uh, Billy Myers said that he contacted someone named Pata. And I didn't look at his description yet, so I don't know if it's the same one at all or not. And then this other person said that they channel someone with the name Pata, <laughs> who is a Pleiadian. And well, Pleiadians look like humans. Usually they have like blonde hair and blue or green eyes and very, you know, very blonde hair. And so this guy didn't have hair at all. He was like a gray alien, like what we think of when we think gray alien, but he was not of the normal race that we think of. He's from a totally different place. He had wrinkles in his skin. He was older and he smiled and he had a bigger mouth than what you think of it as, um, a typical ET that is in the media. So I don't know. And his skin was dark, like charcoal gray, dark, dark charcoal gray. But he had such a light and a love in his eyes, even though his eyes were black. And I felt a great deal of warmth and friendship energy. And it wasn't intrusive. It was just very sweet, but I couldn't believe his face was like right next to my face. Like, I felt like if I could reach out, I was going to be able to touch him, even though I don't know if he projected that to me. Was he really here and in a phased out dimension? I don't know what happened. I'm just still kind of like, I wasn't asleep when it happened. I had just laid down. When I first laid down, I was really, really cold and I put blankets on me and I was cold and tired and then when I woke up I was burning up and went into the other room and my my son has a he's sick again yeah he's been out late at night hanging out with his friends and sometimes he's hanging out in the park and I'm like come on stay in you know at least stay inside and he's got to go walk his girlfriend home from university every night because he's worried about her 10 o'clock at night he goes And, um, thank God that part of the city is super safe. So most of the city is pretty safe, but I go out there and he has all the burners on oven on the whole house is like so hot. (laughs) Like I'm going to leave the oven on and turn the burners off because we don't have heaters in our house. Like I told you guys before, it's, you know, <laughs> I like quaint eggs. It's romantic. If you want to warm up, you got to cuddle up with somebody or light candles. Either way, it's super romantic. <laughs> but um, every now and again, we'll usually we bake something like a cake or blueberry muffins or something. But um, I don't know. I don't know what to make about this guy anyway. So that was a kind, uh, kind of a fun <laughs> kind of a fun thing that happened um, just uh, like two hours ago. You know, Schumann Residence is pretty lovely today. I knew it. I felt it from the day or from the moment I woke up. I slept about 12 or 13 hours, 12 or 13 hours. And and by the way, my my um, one of my listeners, her name is Michelle. She wrote me and her twin flame actually is she's a star seed. And her twin flame is on a spaceship and he's just waiting. They're just waiting for all of humanity to ascend fully into the fifth dimension and anchor in and understand what's happening so that they can appear and be, you know, appear to us because we're not quite phased in to where they are. And pretty soon we're going to be there and it's going to be, everything's going to be great. But, um, 
and then we're going to have exchange and, you know, it's just going to be like, you know, the cantina on Star Wars. <laughs> okay, probably not that much, but it, it might be. And it's kind of exciting. I mean, I grew up on these shows. I love these shows and this idea, but, but her twin flame is, he's an ET. He's a star being and she's waiting to be able to phase into that. And he told her telepathically, they speak all the time now. And he told her that we are already ascended (laughs) as far as building our bodies and fixing everything we're done. And that's pretty much what I've gotten to, you know, we just went through this massive clearing in the past few weeks, um, with all of our chakras and all it is, is we have to build now our belief that we're ascended and let go of all of our linear 3d thinking. And she said that what he told her was that we can change just boom in one day and our crystalline form bodies were into it and anchored into those bodies anchored well into the fifth dimension. And when we're there, our bodies are going to look young again, thin again, no more gray or white hair. You know, for those of us who have had uh, agedness, uh, wrinkles that go away, everything is going to be completely like we're 30. Like it is in the seventh dimension when we pass, when we pass on, when we die, you know, quote unquote, <laughs> die. We don't ever die, but when we quote unquote die and we go to heaven, we all look 30. 29, 30, whatever. And, uh, you know, it's just the, the erroneous belief that we do age and I've refused to accept. Oh, here goes my porpoises. You know what? <laughs> Let me turn that off. What? I, I thought for sure I had already turned it off. <laughs> All right. Taylor Swift boosts Glad and bashes homophobia in her song, You Need to Calm Down. That's what I just got right now. That's what the porpoise was. (laughs) Variety breaking news with Taylor Swift. That sounds interesting. And so there's another Pride Month thing I need to look look forward to. That's awesome. (laughs) Uh, All right. So, um, now that my notifications are off, so basically we're already there. We have to build our belief and let go of all of our 3d thinking and all of our constructs. We have to shake off the memories of the matrix in our minds and then we'll just be there. We'll raise up, up, up and we'll be fine. So, um, in a moment, we're going to talk about this, but before we get to that, I'm going to read to you guys the Schumann Resonance news today, 1030 AM UTC time. It says a massive activity is taking place at this time. The total white started quite suddenly at six UTC and from eight UTC is constantly above 40 Hertz. The most powerful peaks so far have been 60 hertz and 65 hertz, respectively, at 8.30 and 9.30. And then the evening report, 1700. They have actually two evening reports. The first one says, The strong activity of today has lasted 8 hours from 6 to 14 UTC. The central phase is the one that has seen the most powerful peak at 65 Hertz. Currently the amplitude values are back to normal. And then it says at the secondary report after six hours from 14 to 20 UTC, during which the amplitude remained calm, quote-unquote calm, we are seeing an increase of movements within the first one at 2020 UTC, close to 20 hertz. Ooh, 2020-20. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of cool. 
This was followed by a stronger spike at 46 hertz at 22.30 UTC time. So their secondary evening report, they said that was at 1,700. They forgot to change it. They usually do the secondary night report, not the evening, but the night report is usually at 23.30 UTC time. So pretty cool. So basically today the largest spike was 65 hertz and for six hours it was above 40 I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty cool, which explains also why we are at 99 on the Ascension Symptoms scale. Really, really tired. Um, It was really hard for me to do practically anything today, and I had to get up. I had to get dressed. I had to leave the house. I had to do errands. Um, It was just, I don't know. if have, Have you guys ever had the feeling of, like you're out and about walking around, but things feel like it's just so hard to get stuff done. Like it's almost like you're walking in quicksand or you're walking in. Um, it just felt like there's so much drag on, on my body. Like my body was just like, I am not up for this. I'm like, uh, it's just, you know, tough titties chew the milk, you know, <laughs> like my grandma used to say, and one of the most insane sayings in the world, probably not okay to say anymore. So apologies for that. <laughs> I was just like, I felt like I was walking at the bottom of the deep end of a swimming pool today. That's the kind of drag I felt in my body as I was walking, like everything was such a big fricking pain to do. Even though my spirit was willing, my flesh was weak. (laughs) I mean, it's like such a weird feeling. I, I just sometimes have these feelings like I'm, my body just is like, no, no. So, um, But I got the things done that I needed to get done. And uh, maybe it's just because when I woke up, I I didn't have any coffee. My, my, I gave my son money to go get coffee yesterday and he had errands to do and completely forgot. He was already on the way home on the bus and he was sick and he came home. He's like, oh my God, I completely forgot coffee. I'm so sorry, mom. I go, well, you know what? Let's go tomorrow morning together. We'll go to this coffee house and we'll drink coffee together. We'll buy some coffee and we'll just make a morning of it and it'll be wonderful. And he's like, okay, great. And then an hour later, he's like, okay, look, I was starting to feel sick and now I'm definitely sick. I'm staying home tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, well, I had a feeling that you might forget. And I had gone out and bought, God forbid, freeze dried instant Nescafe coffee. I always try to have it around in a pinch and they have it next door and I bought it and <laughs> because the the prepackaged uh, national brands here that aren't directly from a farm are terrible. Like the first time I try, I have some here in the house. I should just throw it away, but I've got to find a use for it. And um, I don't know, planting roses or something. I don't know. But first time I tried it, I took a sip of it and I spit it out, and I just. I just screamed out loud, God, why do you hate me suddenly out of nowhere? And I started laughing so hard because it was like, it was that bad. It was so bad. It was like, well, this is not coffee. It's a devil's F Lucy. You know? <laughs> it was so horrible. I'm like, oh my God, no, 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 no. How, how could I live in the best place in the world to have the best coffee? And this is what they put out? in the normal grocery stores. Oh no. Horrible, horrible stuff. I'm like, well, you know, if you didn't know, now, you know, (laughs) so, but when I, anytime I go to the, you know, farmers, so I found a lady who has a direct connection to a farm today, a new place. And I'd gone to this other place and I thought this was the place I had sent my son to. I walk in and there were like 10 cops I mean everywhere I look there's like different types of police like local police state police I think there was a national police like two or three different types of cops 
all sitting around drinking coffee and not one normal, I mean, non-cop person. And I'm like, oh, um, all right. And I just got nervous because as you do, (laughs) I blurted out, Oh, and in Spanish, I'm like, oh, it's a, well, it's a good sign if all the police are here. That means the coffee here is very, very good. And then all of a sudden, they all looked at me suspiciously, and they looked at me like I'm a freaking criminal, which I'm not anymore. And <laughs> and I never have been in this country, although <laughs> I'm kind of in between legal and illegal right now. I'm waiting for my visa next week. Once I get it, I'll be fully legal, but I'm not illegal because I have an appointment, which according to the government here, if you have an appointment, then you're fine. (laughs) So the whole thing is just crazy. It's just, it's almost, it's crazy. It's almost to the point of being comical. So, um, they, uh, were eyeballing me the whole time and I'm like what the fuck and only one of them actually is really handsome oh my god so handsome cop sitting by himself not socializing with the others I'm all well there's my kind of guy right there right (laughs) I'm a I'm one of them but not of them you know (laughs) the one introvert loner cop I'm all woo and he smiled at me and he, he looked like a young a really young Mario Van Peoples and I'm like or Peoples I'm like oh my god he's so handsome I was like uh oh <laughs> you know, I wanted to talk to him more and I was like oh my god he's so good looking but <laughs> kind of caught me off guard <coughs> <laughs> I mean, he looked like a straight up actor, gorgeous, gorgeous man. And so I went in and asked and they did not even have the coffee. So basically the place I sent my son to yesterday was a big fat wild, wild goose chase. Anyway, um, the name of the place was supposed to be Tribu. Now it doesn't even exist. Now the place is called Lobo <laughs> or Lobos. It was called Wolves wolves and I went in there and it was all cops I'm like oh my god I just walked into a den of wolves and they didn't even they didn't even sell coffee you you could only drink it there they didn't sell it and I'm like ugh so I found a place next door where she was willing to sell me a pound of coffee and it's absolutely excellent coffee and I think it was her father's farm or something so that made me happy but I just went on a wild goose chase myself, though. I mean, my friend had told me where his other place was called Sinfonia. He said it was excellent. I went in there, and all I had was super, super light roast, which I can't stand. It's horrible uh, to me. Other people love it. I just, I, I don't know. I like French roast. I like Italian roast. I like the darker roast. Even the medium roasts are, are okay. The breakfast blends are okay, but... <sighs> I'm kind of a coffee snob. I mean, (laughs) I moved to this country for the coffee specifically. (laughs) Oh, anyway, I want to read to you guys lesson five in A Course in Miracles in keeping with the idea that I want to keep my energy up, my high vibrations. Today in the afternoon, something did attach itself to my crown chakra. So I want you guys to always be ever aware and ever present because things can attach to you just out of nowhere and it happened to me this afternoon and I I felt something was amiss and I I um, used a pendulum and I asked about each chakra and I went through everything Um, every chakra had to focus on everything just focus with my energy and from my mind inside the chakra and each chakra I would say Koldawish, 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 Adonai Adonai Tzabayath, okay? Kodawish, 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 Adonai Tzabayath. Now, I said that three times for each chakra, and then I went through with the pendulum, and I asked if I have a spirit attached, I connected to God directly, and every single time the answer was no, 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 no. And then I got to my crown chakra, and the answer was yes. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? So... (laughs) 
So I asked God to um, unhook it, remove it from me. And I, I chanted again. I put the energy there. I asked Archangel Michael to come and cut it with his sword. And then I said, Kodowish, 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 Adonai Zabayath three times again. And then with the pendulum, I was okay. And it was free. It was gone. And I asked about my aura. I asked about my emotional body, my, my mental body, all of it. And everything was gone. Like, I mean, everything was clear. I was completely clear, but isn't that funny? It's like what you think about, you bring about. So as I had done that episode, I thought, well, now that I've thought about it, (laughs) I better check just to make sure I always want to be clear for you guys. So wanted to tell you what I did and how I did it today, just so you know for yourself. Lesson five in A Course in Miracles says, This is what you need to think all the time. I am never upset for the reason I think. I highly recommend immediately going and doing this. Go to ACIM.org or check out your your A Course in Miracles app if you are deciding to do this. This is an excellent one. It will help you through any and every situation that upsets you even a little bit. So if you come across a perceived upset, you have to say, for example, I am not angry at blank for the reason I think. I am not afraid of blank for the reason I think. And then it says later, it says, there are no small upsets. They are all equally disturbing to my peace of mind. And later it says, uh, I cannot keep this form of upset and let the other go, the others go for the purposes of these exercises. Then I will regard them all as the same. And then later it says, I am not worried about blank for the reason I think I am not depressed about blank for the reason I think. So lesson five is pretty profound. If you read through the whole thing, it's, um, <clears throat> excuse me it's uh it's pretty interesting you know if you uh think that you're full of anxiety or worry and you don't don't give one emotion power above all the others give them all equal power but also let yourself understand that you're never upset for the reason you think ever it's never uh and that will help unravel the emotion of it and a course in miracles and all of these inform all of this information is always going to bring you to a deeper understanding of your true self, <laughs> your true nature, and it will unravel you and unhook you from the third dimensional linear construct matrix thinking. That's kind of the point of what we're doing here with this podcast. So, all right, guys, I'm going to be right back and grab another cup of this delicious coffee I got downtown from this beautiful lady in the Tigrillo Cafe. So when I come back, we're going to learn how to remove your own obstacles. I'm going to channel Lord Ganesh for you. Something he told me before I started the introduction or the first half of the show, he did tell me he never really had an elephant head. It's just a, it's just like a, and I'm like, well, were you ugly? You know, like, did you show up in the world ugly so that you could overcome that obstacle? <laughs> and he's like, no, it was just some, like a legend that grew and grew and grew. And again, he also wasn't a god for real. He, was a man that went on his own ascension path and became an ascended, enlightened master all on his own. I mean, it wasn't like, see, we're all getting support from the earth itself, from the heavens itself, from all of our space brothers and sisters, as well as, you know, uh, each other because we're lifting and boosting each other now, which so even though what we're going through is pretty freaking hard, it's a lot easier doing it all together. But a lot of these ascended masters from the past, they were all on their own. I mean, they were lucky if they met one or two or three people in their lifetime going through the same thing. 
you know, like, I don't think Jesus was around. His mother probably was ascending too, but which I'm pretty sure she did, but he didn't really have a whole lot of people around him ascending. When you read the stories in the Bible, um, you know, we had to take it with a grain of salt. We don't know how, you know, strong, you know, these stories, if they really happened or if they're just added on to, but you know, even his, his disciples, followed him, believed in him, trusted him, but they still didn't always a hundred percent get him. And they were always asking him questions. And he's just like, you know, I just can imagine doesn't like say Jesus side, you know, but it seems to me like a lot of the times when you're reading the context of the the stories, it's like, he's probably like, Uh, (laughs) like they weren't getting it he was explaining it and he had explained everything in stories and parables for them to get it and even then after that they still didn't totally get it I mean he's constantly explaining stuff so even the people that resonated with him enough to follow him they weren't really ascending themselves you know they were elevated by his presence but they didn't go through the same process so he did this all on his own I think his mother did it with him maybe his wife uh, Mary Magdalene I think she ascended with him too but most of the people did this in the past there's only two or three people together not really a whole lot of people you know we're all extremely lucky so again let's be hashtag grateful right I think that's um imperative that we know our position is pretty pretty incredible you know we've already ascended we just have to change our belief systems so anyway i'm going to be right back and lord ganesh is going to teach us how to remove your own obstacles remember please for me just let the the uh, commercial play out yay i got a sponsor yay for spotify (laughs) please let it play out go this is your time this is your bathroom break (laughs) i'll be right back If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts and you probably like music too. Long walks on the beach, romantic dancing under the stars, and oh wait, we're not doing that right now. (laughs) On Spotify, you can listen to all of that in one place. For free, and you don't even need a premium account, which is cool. Free is always good. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, including your long romantic walks on the beach. Also, one one thing I love about Spotify is that you can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with the social platforms like Instagram. So that makes it really, really versatile. Just search for Metaphysical Soul Speak on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, of course, don't forget, so that you'll never again miss an episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. Thank you guys so much for supporting Metaphysical Soul Speak on Spotify. All right, guys, I am back and I am already connected to Lord Ganesha, who is known more commonly in India as the elephant headed God. He has the body of a human and the head of an elephant. Um, As I explained in the first half of the show, he literally did not have that, obviously. (laughs) Um, it, it's just kind of a metaphor more than anything. 
but he is known for removing obstacles. And if you have an image of Lord Ganesha in your life, you could even use it as a screensaver on your phone or your compute on your computer. Basically, he if you just ask him to help you, you know, he's a saint. Mass, he's a master, he's a spiritual master. He ascended in his lifetime. And he's there to help us with um, anything and everything we need or want in our life and how to take our own obstacles out of our own way as if, I mean, he could help remove your obstacles as well, but he's going to teach you how to do it for yourself today now that you are becoming an ascended master yourself. Okay, I'm going to take a couple deep breaths. As you guys know, when I channel, I do not allow any being to take over my body like some channelers tend to. I am a telepathic psychic medium channel. So what that means is I psychically and telepathically receive the messages. So I channel in real time. I didn't write this down beforehand. Sometimes I do that, and I'll let you know if I do. Right now, today, I am in real time (laughs) with you. Okay. (sighs) Lord Ganesha, are you here? I am my child, he says. You wish to teach us today how to remove our own obstacles, correct? That is correct, yes. You're saying hello, my children? Okay, I don't know if this is, you know, and again, you guys, if I think something might be from my subconscious mind rather than directly from the spirit, I always make double sure. I check with kinesiology to get a yes or a no because I always want to bring you the high quality information and I always want to make sure I'm a clear channel for you. Okay. So he says, hello, my children. (laughs) He says, I think of you as my pupils, as if I am your teacher and you're in a classroom. Indeed, in, in many ways, this world is a classroom. It is a wide variety of learning of lessons, experiences, and knowledge that comes to you through those direct experiences. Your lives are wide and varied and different from one another, and yet the one thing all of you have in common is indeed the obstacles. Many obstacles are thrown in your path during your lifetime because you are meant to learn how to overcome them. The number one thing you need to understand in overcoming your obstacles is you need to overcome your mind. You need to overcome your emotions you need to overcome your belief systems that are based on past experiences you need to overcome the oppositions that come from your parents your family your friends and society at large and in general because they will continuously try to keep you down and hold you back from your goal. Regardless of what the goal is, society will always threaten to hold you back if you allow it. People will tell you, That's not good for you. Don't move ahead. Don't go ahead. Don't go out on your own. Don't do something that is not safe. 
I'm here to tell you right now. When you rest your head in the mind of God every night, there is no place in this world or any world that is not safe. (sighs) Tonight, I will attempt to teach you and explain to you how to remove your own obstacles. The first to overcome is your mind. As I have said, how do you do that? You have to root around in your subconscious mind for patterns, (coughs) experiences that showed you your life is filled with lack, Experiences that showed you you will not be accepted by your friends if you move ahead of them. You have to remove the experiences in your mind that tell you your parents will disapprove of you if you do something different than they did, if you have more money than they have, if you move to a a better house than they have, if you move to a better city than they live in. If they live in the city and you want to live in the countryside, and for you that's better, because people want you to feel quote-unquote safe, but what this really means is they themselves want to feel safe and secure, And when you do something outside of the norm, they assume that you're telling them they're not good enough. Of course, that's never your intention. That's never anybody's intention. You're just trying to live your life. Everyone will try to hold you back, push you down, push you away from your goal and from your dreams so that they can feel safe about their own goals and their dreams and they can feel safe about not living their best life because they want to feel the power of their self-imposed safety. Do you understand that people hold you back because they're holding themselves back? This is the first lesson of the mind. You need to let go of all of societal norms. You need to understand that it is okay in the mind of God for you to grow, get ahead, become educated, love the person that you love regardless of their genitals or of their body or how they identify as gender, how you identify as gender, because you are allowed to love who you wish to love. When you look at the world from the mind of God, you will see that you are a spirit and the other person that you love is a spirit. There's never anything wrong with love, according to God. So you must remove your obstacles of mind in relationship to the society around you. Whether the society around you is your mom and dad, your neighbor, your sister or brother, your best friends, or even just your co-workers, because ultimately in the end, Only you can live your life. Only you can live your best life. All right, guys. Uh, Something just weird happened. I have the phone in my hand that I'm recording this on. I have the phone, my other phone, to the right of me. Now, to the left of me, I just heard a beep. 
There's nothing over there that possibly could beep. My computer's across the room to the right, and it's been turned off for days. Did you guys hear it? <laughs> it went beep, like that, kind of. <laughs> I can't duplicate electronic sounds with my mind. It was not in my ear, it was not my tinnitus. <sighs> Feels like a being came in. Do you guys feel it? Is there somebody else here? Um, are you an Ar- Arcturian? The Arcturians are here. Are you guys, you aren't going to interfere with my show, right? No? Okay. Okay. They said we're just here to lend support and to love you. Thank you. I heard your beep. It scared me a little bit. It was not our intention to scare you, they said. Okay. But I, I'm not here to channel the Arcturians right now. Is that okay? It wasn't our intention to be channeled today either. Okay. They said, we just want to love you and basically support you. Thank you, guys. I love you, too. Thank you so much. Arcturians are very high vibration. They're ninth dimensional beings. So, <laughs> Woo! sorry, Lord Ganesh, I did not mean to interrupt our conversation. <laughs> I hope, this is another reason. I hope you guys appreciate this the way, the way that I do because it's like so many crazy things happen while I'm doing one thing. Other things happen and we are multidimensional beings living in a multidimensional universe and all the other beings around us also <laughs> at the same time are multidimensional. And so we're living on so many different levels. And once you become aware of things, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> okay, Lord Ganesha, we are back. <laughs> back to what you are telling us about removing of obstacles. I think we're finished with the level of mind, correct? Yes, that is correct. Now we're going to move on. The second thing you need to know in removing your personal obstacles is you need to remove the obstacles on the level of your own belief systems. Now, this can consist of religious beliefs, even spiritual beliefs. For example, some people believe that they cannot obtain money unless they cast a spell or they burn incense or they bring flowers to their favorite god or goddess statue in the town square. I think he's referring to India. Is this correct? Yes, I I take examples from my own culture because this is what I know. But in other cultures, this occurs as well. In many cultures around the world, people believe that they need to create a sense of magic in order for a thing to happen because they lack in self-belief that they are all too powerful with their own words, mind, thoughts, actions, Indeed, their deeds moving forward can create a momentum that brings whatever about that they need and want in their life. What happens is they want to still fit in. People want to fit in. They want to fit in with other alternative people so for example we'll take a different culture the United States many people want to live on the fringe they want to call themselves spiritual they want to live outside of religious beliefs so instead of atoning their sins on Sunday morning in a church 
and then praying to God and hearing a man speak about God and offering money, hoping that will bring them more. They decide that might not be for them. And then they decide they want to have a spiritual belief system. And he's showing me something. I I tried for a very, very small amount of time, like about a week to do this chanting thing. They called it Buddhism, even though it wasn't really actual Buddhism. I don't think (laughs) it was just a chanting system to chant away your karma. I'll, I'll talk about that on another day because it's pretty interesting. But um, the Namio Ren Gekio people. <laughs> and so he's showing me that I went to do this. So, okay, what do you have to say about that? He said, did you not find that it was yet kind of like another religion? Yes, I did. Totally. If you don't do something exactly at the right time and exactly the way they say it, they, it's almost like I felt like they were going to crack me over the head with a bamboo stick. That was like the energy of, of what it was. Exactly, because they traded their religion for another religion that they created themselves. And he says, okay, and then he's also showing me an example from my life where I was invited to witness um, a ritual by a coven of 13 witches that were very powerful in Los Angeles. He says, you discovered quickly you did not fit in there too, did you not? Yes, exactly, I did, and I felt like it was these... Again, the same thing, like if you do not fit in with us, if you do not wear long, black, scary looking robes and your hair is not kind of like the in the wild woman style, you know, I kind of felt out of place because my hair was brushed and I wore makeup and they did not wear makeup and their hair was wild and curly and all over the place. And they're wearing these clothes that kind of looked almost, I think they were deliberately looking like they were torn and ripped And then they had their bosoms were kind of half showing. And I think one of the ladies even had her boobs a little bit out. Like there's a little nippleage. Like I was like, this is not something I am into. And they got drunk and they danced and they danced and they danced and they danced and ran a fire in a circle until they built themselves up into a frenzy. And I'm like, this is all too much work for me. I mean, I just want to go to the gym and then do a small ritual at home. Right. So that's kind of my experience. And I was like, eh, this energy is not for me either. It's kind of weird and dark, even though they said they were witches of the light. Everyone had to wear black. I think even one of them had, a, had an old fashioned witch hat, like a Halloween witch hat, <laughs> like a conic shaped. I'm like, why do you think you have to be like that? Like, that's not, you know, it's like your energy. It's not about your clothing. So, all right, that was my personal experience. So, he, so go on, Lord Ganesha. So, again, indeed, with this experience, is it not trading one religion for another? Yes, exactly, it was. You're right. So, when I am to talk about belief systems, what I'm trying to discuss is here with you, so that you understand extremely clear. You do not need outward clothing or fire or a glass of water, or incense, or just the right crystal. You do not need the outer things. You do not really need the tarot cards. You do not need your hair to be in a certain way, covered or uncovered, or with a special hat. You don't need a conic-shaped hat, a cone-shaped hat, in order to channel the energy of the universe because you have to eliminate all the beliefs of the outward magic that as Brother Yeshua says is a form of insanity. When you know who you are and you take in the belief of the actual reality of who you are you will understand that you are a creator you co-create the universe but in your life you are the creator by your words it is made so that has been said before right these are not my words By your word, it is made so, the Logos. 
Jesus said that. Brother Yeshua said that. Sananda, he said that. You need to eliminate the belief. <laughs> so you need to eliminate the belief that you need to present a bowl of fresh rice and fruit for your god or goddess in order to get what you wish in your life. You need to stop looking outside of yourself for your life to happen. Because when your belief is coupled with erroneous and insane ideas that you have to create it using the help and the aid even of your own ancestors. If you think you cannot create a life without having to connect to one or two or 20 or 200 beings first, these are stalling practices. You are stalling and putting off your own good success. And this is putting your own power outside of yourself. This is holding your life hostage through erroneous beliefs and practices that you no longer need. Now, I'm not here to banish all of your beliefs. I'm not trying to break your world, your life, or your paradigms. I'm not here to break up anything. But if you want to understand your personal power and who you are at the core of you, you're going to have to remove the obstacles that prevent you from doing what you need to do to get to where you want to get and from having what you want to have. Because when these things don't happen because you wasted your time and spun your wheels so rapidly and so fast and you wasted all of your energy on things outside of yourself, it then becomes very easy to blame the things outside of yourself. My orange I gave to Goddess Lakshmi, maybe it wasn't fresh enough. Maybe it wasn't from the correct tree. Now I have to go running through all the orchards to find the one tree that Goddess Lakshmi will accept. To be honest with you, if you want to work with Goddess Lakshmi, you only need to give her your love and your respect. Do you think that gods and goddesses are almighty and all-powerful, but still need to eat your food? Do you see how insane that sounds from this perspective? How erroneous and crazy? The sounds? I am Lord Ganesh. You do not need to bring me a bowl of rice and light incense and spin your wheels doing 20 things or 100 things to appease me or get my attention. You just have to say, Lord Ganesh, please help me and give me your love and respect, which should automatically come with the initial intention of, of conversating with me, of talking to me. When you believe that I am here for you, you will understand automatically that that should come from a place of love in your heart. I understand it to be so. Do you really think I need to smell your incense? Do you see how crazy this sounds from this perspective? If you want to do that and it gets you in the proper mindset, in the proper state of mind, then by all means, put out a bowl of rice, leave an orange, light the incense, but do not believe that I need that. Or that you need to do five things first. In a, you know, you don't have to walk around a tree 20 times backwards under a full moon naked. You don't have to do these things. That is insanity. It wastes your time and your energy. And it becomes an obstacle to your success. 
I mean, what if you do all of these rituals? You can't win the lottery without buying a lottery ticket, they say. <laughs> you can't have a successful business if you never open the doors. And if you open the doors, it can't be successful if you never advertise to get the word out. You can't bring me 20 offerings a day and expect to get customers if you forgot to call the newspaper and put an ad in or you forgot to go on the internet and put an ad on the internet. You see, you understand where I'm going with this. So when I say you must eliminate all of your beliefs that are erroneous, you must take back all of your personal power. You must empower yourself and you must understand you yourself. You are a God. You have to own it and believe it and stop putting the energy outside of yourself. Gather back all the energy onto you with humility, with love, with joy. Become a magnet for your success rather than dissipating all of your magnetic energy all over town and all over the universe and all over everybody else. And then when it doesn't work, you blame other things. You see, your belief must follow what you need in order for you to literally be successful. This is a grand mistake most people make. I didn't do it on my own. Maybe I need to appease a god or a goddess or do all these insane things. You don't need any of them. You have to believe it's going to happen the way you need it to happen. You will have the house. Imagine yourself inside the house. But also work for it. When you stop scattering your energy to all of the winds, (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. Oh, that was so funny to me. (laughs) It's true. It's so true. And I've been, I have been, I have done this too. So (laughs) he speaks to me as much as he speaks to you. When you scatter your energy upon the winds, You yourself just become a breeze, but you want to be a force almost like a hurricane in your life. Hurricanes pretty much knock away all of the obstacles in their path, do they not? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, for sure. No one tells a hurricane to stop and it stops. It doesn't become barely a whimper. It continues on its path. Gather your energy unto yourself as if you are a force of nature to be reckoned with. And he's saying, obviously, as long as it hurts nobody else, you know, obviously. But gather your energy unto yourself. Live from a place of love and humility. Be humble, be grateful. Be bold, be powerful. One does not eliminate the other. It can all exist in the same space because you are dynamic as individuals. The third thing in removing your own obstacles. You must get out of your own way physically and allow you spend so much time on your body beating yourself up for not having a perfect body your physique you don't need the perfect muscles to have love your only muscle you need to worry about is your heart The love in your heart 
when cultivated correctly, will remove all of your obstacles to true love. It must start with you falling in love with yourself, not focusing on your outer flaws. So you have a blemish on your face this week. So what? So your hair might be a little messy. Do you think your one true love is going to care if your hair is a little bit dirty today? Like maybe you didn't shower in the morning. You were going to do it in the afternoon. Do you think your one true love is going to sense and feel your heart and be absolutely drawn to you only to go, Oh, forget it. I don't wish to love you today because you didn't wash your hair. If someone isn't attracted to you because you have acne on your face today, they're not the one. Your one true love is going to love you unconditionally and automatically. There are many one true loves out there. (laughs) Not really one, but in your colloquialism, you say the one true love. And don't allow yourself to put up a block and an obstacle because you already had one love in your life. Don't say, I had my one true love and now it's over. This is also an obstacle you can easily remove because... Some of you will have twin flames, but all of you, twin flames or not, you have soulmates. When there's 7 billion people on the planet, don't tell me you can't find someone to love. You can't find someone to love you. You put up your own blocks and obstacles. Don't go on one website and say that you can't. He's talking to me directly. I know this. <laughs> but maybe to some of you too. Don't tell me that you go to one website and you couldn't find love on that one website so love doesn't exist. That again is erroneous and insane. When you, again... Put your energy outside of yourself to find the love that you need. You're going to scatter your energy to the winds. (laughs) I just see like this massive wind come up and just blow away all my energy and them all like flapping around like a leaf like, oh, oops. You know, it's kind of like an energy I'm getting or like a, a, a picture in my mind when he says this. (laughs) It makes me laugh. It's like, oh no, I might fall off my tree. (laughs) Uh, He says, once again, cultivate the love in your heart to have love in your life. Love yourself unconditionally. So you have a blemish. So what? So your hair was dirty. So your pants are ripped. You can always buy new pants. You can cleanse your face. The blemish will go away. You can cleanse your hair. It will go away. The weight will be lost when your diet is correct for you. Your bodies are perfect. Your perfect bodies are waiting for you. You're already in the fifth dimension. You just have to accept that and stop looking at the outer appearance because the person or persons that will love you are going to be with you because of the energy of your heart, the power of your mind. Like attracts like. If you are an intellectual, you're not going to be happy with an idiot or an imbecile. (laughs) And it doesn't matter what you like. A lot of this, ha- when when it comes to things like true love, a lot of times you allow the beliefs of other people and the beliefs in your mind, your obstacles, 
you allow other people to shame you or blame you. And then you use that as your own obstacle. You need to just give all of that up. It's okay if you like older women. It's okay if you like younger men. It's okay if you like younger women or older men. It's okay if you like people the exact same age as you. It's okay if you only like Pisces men or Pisces women or Virgo Pisces or Virgo men or Virgo women. It's okay if you only want to date people with blonde hair or you only like people with black skin. There's nothing wrong with what it is that you like. You need to stop putting on yourself what other people's limitations and expectations of you are. You don't really live in a box. Why are you living in a box? Why do you allow other people to impose upon you their own beliefs and ideas and systems and how society ought to function? What if you are of one religion and the person that you love is a different religion. Do you think God cares? Love is love. So please remove all of your obstacles in regards to love. Seek the love first in your own heart. Love yourself first. Let all outer appearances fall away. Don't worry if you're overweight and the person that you would love is thin or muscular or in perfect shape because maybe they're coming into your life to help you to become in perfect shape. Maybe they're coming to show you and reflect to you your own beauty regardless of what your body looks like because to them, you're beautiful. Don't protest. Don't say, yeah, but I have this acne. Yeah, but I have this little fat roll on on my stomach or, you know, my age isn't right for you. Don't limit yourself in the eyes of others because, again, that's insanity. Don't don't limit yourself for any reason. Love yourself completely and unconditionally. If you align your will with the one will of the true divine... You'll understand how unconditional the love is directed at you. In order for you to break free from your obstacles, you must love yourself in the same way that God loves you. To do anything other than that is to go against God. To refuse to love yourself in the way that God loves you is to basically say on a subconscious level that God's love isn't good enough and you don't deserve that. In a way, that is the ultimate greatest sin. We in the upper realms wish to remind you that you are loved beyond condition. You are powerful beyond measure. You are capable beyond where you think your abilities lie. You must band together with like-minded people who follow messages like these. And put your minds together and function in a new society in which you no longer restrict yourself, in which you no longer put obstacles in your own path, when you no longer accept obstacles that other people attempt to throw at you. You deserve better. You deserve more. And you're going to get it with humility, gratitude, grace. Give yourself grace and love. Love yourself. The only way you can attract the highest vibration, people, circumstances, places, and things into your life 
is to only accept the highest and best for yourself. Do not diminish yourself that others might feel bigger. Create a life in which you are the biggest force of nature. And other people will follow in your wake until they catch their own weather, (laughs) their own energy, and they become their own force of nature. You are a part of nature because you're needed in nature. You are needed in the situation you're in. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in it. Stand up. Be counted by yourself. Count yourself. God already counted you. God created you because you're important to God. To think otherwise is a sin. To think otherwise is erroneous. It's insanity. We love you. We're rooting for you. We wish only the best for you. I am Lord Ganesh. I am at once your teacher, your big brother, your best friend, your helper, and your guide. I love all of you. I'm going to leave you now with the energy of peace, love, and a good sense of yourself. Ask me, call upon me, don't feel afraid. Just ask me out loud with your words, Lord Ganesh, help me with this. Help me see the truth of this. I will cut through all of your obstacles that you may see the truth in any situation. Love, money, success, career, business. Spirituality is my specialty. God, finding God, knowing God, finding the God within you. I will help you with anything and everything. No obstacle is too great for me. No obstacle is too great for you. And I'm here to help you understand that. So anytime you need my help, just say, Lord Ganesh, come help me. You don't have to be Hindu or live in India. You don't have to wear a certain robe or chant a certain way. You don't have to do any ritualistic outward things. You need to look inward, understand by your own understanding only when it aligns with the one will. Find the God within and I am here to help you to do that. It is time for you to spiritually mature, to grow up and become the God and the goddess that you are always meant to be. Namaste. And he's bowing to me. Thank you, Lord Ganesha. Thank you so much. All right, guys, there's not really much else I can add to that. <laughs> He's a tough act to follow. I love each and every one of you. And uh, I hope this message found you um, in a receptive state of mind that you could receive the bounty of wisdom from Lord Ganesha. I hope that this has helped you in any way. (laughs) It could in every possible way. So now... I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, guys. Peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts 
and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.